Well, praise the Lord. Good to be back tonight in the Lord's house. Look out over the congregation tonight. Good to see you back. We have some that make it back tonight, but we're glad you're here and looking forward to having a good time. Happy Grandparents Day to those of you that are grandparents. And uh, did all those that were here this morning, did you get your, your gift? So I know we run out before everybody got out. Anybody did not get one this morning that was here? You the grandparent? You a grandparent? A grandparent. You're a great grandparent. Great. Okay. Okay. I know. I know. So, yeah, that's what I, well, that's what I was referring to. Okay, I brought something out tonight for those who didn't get me. I know Miss Jones didn't get one, so we'll give Rick Rack. We'll give Rick one. Not Rick Rack. Brother Rick. Yeah, you set it up. You get them. Come on. Those who didn't get one this morning, raise your hand. Those who's grandparents. You know how to get in the office? No. Well, that's a good thing, probably. <laughs> All right. Brother Donnie, you know how to get in it. Go back here and in the office and get about six more of those items right in front of my desk. We'll make sure everybody gets one. Make sure Ms. Maxine gets one. And while he's doing that, let's just uh, take time to mention some of the prayer requests. Uh, pray for Alvin uh, Maccabee that's in the hospital. We'll continue to pray for Lori, that the Lord touch her and help her to get well. That's Kathy and Jimmy's daughter. And then, of course, continue to pray for our sick folk. Pray for Rufus and pray for Rick Melton. Continue to pray for Rick Hatchett. Pray for Bill Noblet and Jimmy and Dizzy and Helen and Smiley, Faye and Frank Bailey, and pray for Faye's uh, mother. And pray for Willie Johnson, Steve Lawson, Jennifer Busey, Jane Brown. Continue to pray for Sister Doris. And uh, Wilma Few, keep her in your prayers. And... Uh, if I left out anybody, as I said before, I don't intentionally do that, so I hope and pray all those will be okay. So uh, let's keep them in our prayers. Just give Miss Maxine one, Brother Donnie, and give Miss uh, Jane McDaniels, uh, give it to Rick Rat. Rick, Rick Rat, give hers, give him hers, okay. And then give uh, Miss Jane another one for Brother Tony. He's out of town. So and pray for Brother Tony while he's out of town. He may be out for several weeks, so keep him in your prayers. All right, anybody else didn't get one? Don't be ashamed. Raise your hand. We'll give you one. Okay. All right, now, everybody happy? Amen. Well, praise the Lord. We ought to be. Amen. All right, let's stand and go to the Lord in word of prayer then. That's the Lord's blessing tonight to be upon the offering. When we take it, pray about, upon the prayer request and upon the service. And pray everything that's done and said be done to please the Lord and give him glory, praise, and honor. So good to see you in the Lord's house tonight, some we haven't seen in a while. We're glad you're here. Appreciate you coming, being a part of the service. That's Brother Marvin Petit. Brother Marvin, if you would, if you'd lead us in prayer at this time. Amen. 
Amen. Remain standing if you would please. Turn your hymn books, page number 185. Page 185. We'll sing the first and the last verse, His Way With Thee. Page 185. Amen. Would you live for Jesus and be always pure and good? Would you walk with Him within the narrow road? Would you have Him bear your good and carry all your load? Let Him have His way with thee. His power can make you what you Thank you so much. You may be seated. We just let him do that. We'd all be in a better situation today if we just let the Lord control our lives and have his way with us. Amen. We have uh, Sister Destiny is going to come and sing for us. And I think her daddy's going to help her out some. And uh, you pray for them as they sing. I know the song will be a blessing. Grandparents Day, uh, my grandmother had five grandchildren. And when she would call me, she would call me by all five grandchildren's names. <laughs> Brian, Christy, John, whoever you are. If my, is that my grandmother the only one like that? <laughs> oh, okay, I just wanted to make sure. I ain't got there yet, so I don't understand that. So I'm sure it'll get there. But we serve a God who knows everybody's name. I mean, he knows the names. He says he's got the hairs counted on our head. For some of us, that's easier than others. For some of us, that's easier than others. But our God loves us and takes care of us. He knows our names. Now, I will say one thing. My grandmother could holler our names, and we didn't know who she was talking to. But when she would holler, we knew who she was. We knew when there was a certain little country woman shrill come out that voice, somebody, John Christie, John Mike Bubble, we're getting whooped. <laughs> we knew that. But God knows our name and we know his voice. So just listen to the words of this song.
glad he knows my name. If you'll cry out to him, he'll know yours too. And he'll get you through all those tough times in life. Amen. Our brother Buddy's going to come at this time. He's going to sing for us. Pray for him as he's coming. The Lord will use the song. I'm glad that when I couldn't come to him, he came to me. We'll get to go to him. 
when he calls us home. What a day that'll be, and I can't wait to see him. If you'll stand, please, and turn in your hymn books, page 167. Page 167. We'll sing the first and the last verse. Oh, I want to see him. Page 167. As I journey through this land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow, many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord Thanks so much. You may be seated. My dad's going to come and sing tonight. He had somebody ask him if he'd sing this song for him, so he's going to sing it for all of us, I guess. We'll all get to listen. I'm glad God's mercy Amen. came down one day. Oh, yes. yes. Well, don't get no better than that. He 
saw sin had me bound when I couldn't go up mercy came down and mercy came down and cleansed all my sin the precious blood of the Lamb And dipped down in all that muck and all that mud and picked it up and threw it in that sluice. And he just washed all that mud and all that rock that way. But down at the bottom of it was a little grain of, 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 of gold, just a little sliver. That's what I was. And mercy came down. Well, praise the Lord. I could go home right now and say I've been blessed. Thank God for mercy. Thank God that he came to us. He came to where we were. Amen. We were in a condition we couldn't face, and we couldn't approach a holy God. <laughs> Woo. He came to where we were, Brother Brian, through his mercy and his grace. Oh, Lord, we got so much to be thankful for tonight. Thank we're not going to hell. I'm glad we can have a good time while we're on the journey. Amen. Right. <laughs> Come to a place like this. Shed a few tears. Tears of joy, not tears of sadness, but tears of joy. And realize what the Lord's done for us and how he's blessed us. Been so good to us. My, my. How wonderful that is. Let's have the ushers to come and receive the offering tonight. You give us given unto the Lord. And I know the Lord the richer bless you for all that you do. Ooh. Well, I feel the spirit of the Lord tonight. I believe he's in the place. I believe he's in the house, brother Mike. <laughs> I believe he's in the house. Amen. So let's pray and ask the Lord's blessing upon the offering, the gift, and the giver. Blessings upon all the requests that's been mentioned here tonight. And blessing upon this service. That when we leave tonight, we'll leave rejoicing. Said it's been good to have been in the Lord's house. Brother Buddy, if you'd pray for us, please. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, we just thank Thee for Yes, we do. Oh, Lord, you've house. been so good to us. And Father, we thank Thee that when, when we couldn't come to You, You came to yes. us. Yes. And yeah. Father, we just pray this evening that Thy Spirit will lead and guide the service. Yes. From the songs and the prayers and the preaching of Thy Word, Father, pour out Thy blessing to our love and open our hearts and yes. minds to hear and receive. Granted our Father. And now as we prepare to receive the offering, we just pray that Thou will bless us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother buddy.
the talk comes easy But life's sad is best But it's down in the valley Of trials and temptation well, That's well, glory to God, amen Really put to the test Everybody sing it if you know it Put the God on the mountain Yes, With things go wrong He'll make them right And the God of the good And the God of the day is still God in the night. But the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. With things go wrong, he'll make Aren't you glad of that? And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. And the God of the day is still God in the night. Hey, Amen. Well, praise the Lord, I. I feel good in my heart and my soul tonight. I really do. Oh, I'm just so thankful I'm not going to hell. Amen. Hallelujah. If I don't have nothing else to rejoice about, nothing else to weep about, nothing else to rejoice in, I can rejoice in that tonight, that I'm not going to hell. Oh, what a blessing. Well, I've enjoyed song service. I really have. Really blessed my soul. And it's not over yet. Oh, brother, Mikey, Mikey and Destiny to come back and sing that song they sung for us the other Sunday night. And uh, I don't even know the name of it, but I, I just knew I liked it. Of course, I liked that when they sung tonight, too. Boy, I'm glad, boy, I'm glad he knows my name. Now, say I said Mikey, because I told him this morning when he was going out, I said, I'm going to have to start calling. When I want Mikey to come, I'm going to have to start saying we want Michael. And then if we want Mike, we'll have to say Mike. No, he said, so Brother Mike said, no, his name is Mikey. I said, okay, we'll call Mikey then. I didn't call Mike, did I? That's for Rachel and <laughs> Pastor only. But since he's up here, he's got himself in trouble. Brother Ronnie, I won't, well, you probably can't look it up while they're singing this song, but but I, I want Brother Mike, Mike Boone, when they get through, I want him to sing uh, that God was there <laughs> first or whatever. Always on the first God was first on the scene, whatever it is. He know what I'm talking about. But uh, let me say this also. I appreciate destiny. I've seen a change in this girl. Her attitude's changed. And I know when it happened, we had revival. And she came to the altar a couple of nights, broken, weeping, crying. She, come, she, she, she was by herself. She came a couple of three nights of that revival, and God worked in her life and broke her, changed her attitude. She gets up here, I love the smile that's on her face. And uh, well, I appreciate that. Amen. Well, I love to see God work in lives of people, but especially the young people. Amen. But we're not going to be here forever. If the Lord doesn't come back. We're not going to be here forever. But oh, how we need to raise these young people up. 
Go and enjoy what they're doing when they're serving Jesus. Have a testimony. Have a good attitude. Some of these attitudes of these teenagers, they stink. They don't honor God. They don't honor their parents. They don't honor the law enforcement. They don't honor the laws of the land. They don't honor our government. Just, they don't. And I just want to say that about destiny. Encourage her a little bit. And that's what we need to do. So, you pray for us as destiny, Mikey, and Mike say. <laughs> patrolling tonight if y'all hear me out there if there's any dogs howling it's not my fault I don't have a voice I, I can sing a little harmony sing a few words but uh, I, you're asking too much but I'll do it I tried to get him to let Bubba do it but he won't uh, Brian do it that's my kid name that's what we call them Bubba and Mikey y'all call them Michael and Brian Before you and I were born, he knew the need. Before you and I even had an accident or had an occurrence, he saw and knew the need. Nothing catches him unaware. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. He's there. Accident or something has occurred. So we began to pray, believing 
we are heard Then the doctor say I want you to prepare For the worst But God He was first on the scene before it happened, he knew our need. How many of us would find it quite hard that we wouldn't be here except for these words? But God, in all our lives. We seldom know how many nights the angels were in low. They are never far, the Father's always close. Some folks just don't understand, they say, why don't you quit? They don't know that God, He was first on the scene before it happened. Thank God He knew the deed. How many of us would find it quite hard? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I believe. Yes, sir. <laughs> I think we're a little Bubba sing. He's the only one in the family that got to sing tonight. We don't want him to go home with feelings hurt, do we? What do you want to sing for us, Bubba? What? Yeah, Amazing Grace. Boy, done a good job on that this Sunday morning, didn't he? Last Sunday morning. Boy, mm, we all been, Brother Ronnie's already sung about that mercy that came down. <laughs> Might well throw a little grace in there, too. Well, Dr. Harold Seitler said, preached many, many sermons, and one of the most profound statements I ever heard Dr. Seitler ever say was this. Trying to describe the grace of God is like trying to hug a mountain. 
There ain't no way to do it. I, only, way, only way that you can describe grace is when you look in a mirror. Well, that's a good description. Yes, yes, ma'am, Mick Maxine. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Right. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's all about him. Amen. In fact, we went to the hospital and and uh, visited with her husband and. At one time he was in ICU, isn't that correct? And we went by the first time he was in there for, for a long time. And then we went by and saw him after he was in the room. And like Sister Maxine said, they didn't give him any hope. <laughs> well, Brother Mike sings that song, My Hope's in the Lord. <laughs> and that's where I hope needs to be today, in the Lord. Okay, Brother Brian, you come sing that song Amazing Grace for us. Brother. brother Brian's getting married he's coming to share it. Already bought him a house. He's already moved in. And uh, Saturday, his bride will be moving in with him. Saturday evening. You pray for Brian, <clears throat> pray for Brian and Jennifer as they Amen. become man and wife this coming Saturday. Amen. Pray the Lord just bless him. I love Brother Brian. Brother Brian's a blessing. Amen. Appreciate him so much. A lot of times I'd call him and text him on Sunday morning. Sometimes I'd text Mikey and... Uh, have them to sing one of the songs that their dad usually sings. And they usually always come through. And I appreciate them for that. Yeah. <clears throat> Bless him, Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet yeah. the yes, it sound is. Yes, it is. that that saved yeah. a wretch like me. I once was lost, <laughs> but oh, now yes. I'm found. Was blind, but now I see.
Y'all either love me or y'all just love bad singing. That's just all it is to it. They already have been. <laughs> like to do it in sections, you know. <laughs> yeah, it will. God's got it. <laughs> hey, if he was first on the scene, he's able to take care of us. Rest of us. Amen. I hope your hope's in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Altar's always open if you need to come. They heard God say, have you considered my servant Job? He's one who's faithful in all that he knows. Job lost his children, his land, and all his wealth. When he wouldn't curse God, that's when Job lost his health. His cries could be heard from the ashes.
most a month, maybe two. But cancer has spread and death will find its way. Nothing we can do. There And the young man raised his trembling hands as his eyes filled with tears through the pain, the sorrow. He had to say, Doc, my hope <laughs> is in the Lord. I'm going to trust in him and him. Amen, Brother Danny. Thank the Lord. I, I was thinking about old Brother Rick back there, Rick Hatchett. A few weeks ago, he was going through things and taking cancer treatments. And, and uh, of course, all of us were real concerned. <laughs> <laughs> well, glory to God, amen. Somebody ought to run, amen. <laughs> yeah, but God. Got a statement. Statement Dr. made to Brother Rick when he went back to the PET scan and got the results back. The doctor said he was cancer free. Nobody, you know, nobody but God can do that. I thank the Lord for the doctors and for the knowledge that they have, but they only have that knowledge and wisdom because God allowed them to obtain it. Amen. Let me just say, I don't care the finest doctor in the world. They tell me that Dr. Leland, the uh, cardiologist, heart doctor, heart surgeon that's in Spartanburg County is one of the best. Uh, I had heart surgery. I didn't have Dr. Leland, but I had the fellow that's in the office with him. I had a doctor in the window way. Took me three months to learn how to say his name. <laughs> but he was my doctor, but Dr. Leland, and I understand that Dr. Leland is so good at what he does that if the president of the United States is in this area, he's the one that's alerted and on call and if something happens to him, he would be the one that would perform the surgery or the operation. That must be pretty good. He's good at what he does. But God. <laughs> oh, he's always there. He couldn't do nothing without his hand and his touch. 
And I praise the Lord's holy name for it. Amen. I went for a little procedure this past Friday, and as I was waking up, and the nurses was gathered around the bed, they asked me, they said, would you like something to drink? You got Coke, water, juice, something like that. I said, and then one of the nurses standing on my right-hand side, she said, or whiskey. I said, ma'am, Baptist preachers don't drink. Amen. Now, some say it's a blessing in beer. That's a bunch of hogwash. That's blaspheming against the Holy Spirit of God. I believe that with all my heart. And boy, those nurses had a fit. They boy say, he said, and one of them said, well, yeah, you ought to be at church uh, on Sunday. And I said, yes, and if she comes, I'm zeroing in on her. <laughs> and they just got a big kick out of it because I said that in witness to that young lady in that way. Even at the ones that weren't even in there to come and started taking all that stuff off of me and all that stuff. They said, I understand that you sort of got away with one of our nurses. I said, well, she just got to hear a little bit about Jesus. I'm glad I don't have to turn to whiskey, Brother Mike. I'm glad I don't have to, glad I don't have to go to, to the bottle, <laughs> Brother Sam. Mm. Only God could deliver that man from what he did. Give us testimony, Brother Sam. Would you stand up and give us testimony? I tell you what, come on up here in this pulpit and give us testimony. <laughs> so everybody can hear you over the internet. Hey, it's live streaming. I guess it's on it, Brother Ronnie. Everybody can't hear what goes on out in the sanctuary. And they say, boy, I hate it when y'all having a good service and can't hear what's going on. Well, you know, we don't plan these things. It's God. We, if, we, if we'd planned it, we'd have a microphone station. But we don't plan it. It's just what God does. But Brother Sam, give us a word of testimony. And I appreciate what the Lord's done for this young man. I really do. I've been drinking since I was 15. Done it for 40-something years. I came down and I talked to this man. And when I left here, I stopped. I was drinking a gallon and a half of liquor a week. My wife can testify to that. I was taking 120 pain pills a month. And that Saturday, I went home, and I started pouring out liquor. <laughs> but God! <laughs> but I know everyone here has talked about my drinking of, but he did something more than that for me. It's my heart. Amen. I was probably one of the hardest heart persons you would ever meet. I was a member of some organizations that was with hatred. I didn't meet very many people I cared about. I went through my whole life that way. But God delivered me from that since I've been here. <laughs> You'll share it with us, Brother Furman? Well, Brother Furman's coming, let me just say this. Come, come on up here, Brother Furman. We'll get up here so everybody can hear you. Over the, over the internet. Um, I was back there a while ago turning the lights on when Brother Sam was just sitting right there in the chair, and I was just turning the lights on. And Brother Sam said to me, he said, Preacher or Pastor, has anybody told you today that you're a wonderful pastor? Made me feel like I was worth a million dollars, Brother Furman. Yes, sir. Just an old sinner saved by grace. But God uses us to touch and influence lives. And for a man to give up what he give up, the way he give it up, I'm telling you, God can do it. Amen. You don't have to go to them programs. He can do it. Brother Sam's testimony of that. Brother Furman, you share with us what the Lord's on your heart. Well, Brother Sam, I kind of walked in your shoes myself. I started drinking when I was 14 years old. I drank for 40 years. And my wife, she, she got back right with the Lord, and she was going to church, and she kept on me about going to church, and I just told her no and no, and we argued about it. And the day the good Lord saved me, 
I said, Becky, I said, there ain't nobody go to church but a bunch of hypocrites. I said, I'm not going to go over and sit with a bunch of hypocrites. She said, Furman said, it don't matter. Even the pastor's a hypocrite in that church. She said, you only answer to yourself to God. Amen. Well, she walked out, and I was drinking my third beer that Sunday morning, and then smoked a couple of cigarettes in the house, which she's asked me time and time again not to do. And the Holy Spirit stopped by. I don't know what I wore. Yeah. I shaved and took a shower faster than any man ever took one in his life. I went to church. Gave my heart to the Lord June 10th, 2007. Amen. But I tell you, the awesome God that we do serve, he not only took the alcohol out of my mouth, he done it. He saved me June 10th, 2007. He didn't take the alcohol out of my mouth to July the 4th. Now, people say, when you get saved, you're automatically supposed to quit them things. We're a work in progress. You can't quit everything at one time. They even told me, the doctor even told me, said, Furman, as much as you drink, as long as you drink, there ain't no way you can quit by yourself. I said, Doctor, you're right. God took it out of my mouth. My liver is perfect. I go to the doctor right now. He not only took the alcohol out of my mouth, he healed my body. But he done it the hard way. I snuck out and drank a couple of beers shortly after I got saved. He put me on my knees in my backyard, and I thought I was going to die right there in the yard. I said, Lord, I can't do it myself. I said, it's, it's going to have to be you. I said, you take the alcohol out of my mouth, I'll never drink another drop. That was July the 4th, 2007. And bless his holy name, three days later, he took the cigarettes out of my mouth, too. <laughs> Man, God can do it, folks. You give him a change. Those saying is you just give him a half a change. He can do it. I put on Facebook. I don't, I don't put a whole lot on Facebook. In fact, when people have birthdays, I hardly ever comment and wish and wish somebody a happy birthday, and I have a reason for that. Because I'm afraid that one will have one and I'll fail to do it. And they say that preacher wished that person a happy birthday, but he didn't wish for me one. So you have to be careful. I mean, I wouldn't do that intentionally for anything in this world, but I usually don't do that. In fact, Miss Carolyn's birthday is today. Carolyn Carew's birthday is today. And, uh, of course, we sang happy birthday this morning. She said she stood. We wish her a happy birthday. But I hardly make a comment on Facebook when people have birthdays or anniversaries because I don't want to. Fend somebody that I didn't do that for. But last week I put on there that I was so excited about what the Lord was doing at Emmanuel Baptist Church in Roebuck. Some of you made comment on it. Some of you liked it. Some made comments. And, folk, I'm so, and, I, and that's, that was my honest heart. That was just my heart. What, what the Lord's done for us in the last few months. We've had... I believe it's from not mistaken, 18 total additions to the church. We have a spirit that's the Lord's really renewed in this place and amongst his people. Seeing people get right like Brother Sam and having good people to join our church. And what has blessed me is those that have joined, they've jumped in and been a part, want to work and want to serve. Well, you don't know how that is to a preacher, a pastor. Brother Sam sent me a message yesterday, and I'm not just talking about, I'm not building up Brother Sam. Hey, man, I just thank God for what the Lord's done for him. But he texted me yesterday, sent me a message yesterday. He said, Preacher, I just wanted to know if there's anything I could do for you. The other day when I said we needed somebody to work and change our sign and keep it up to date, I had no idea that four people would come and want to do that job. That's unheard of. Brother Sam got it because he was first. Before Grady and, I mean, before uh, Gary and Trudy joined the church, they two that came out wanted to know if they could do the sign, even though they wasn't members. Man, that's a blessing. 
I knew Brother Mike and Sister Loretta was coming. Oh, what, a couple of months ago, I guess, Brother Mike, he talked to me. I didn't, man, I was about to bust to tell somebody. <laughs> I said, I wish they'd just come on. Well, I wanted to do what the Lord wanted to do. But Brother Mike Boone, not a member of our church now and has not ever been, but I love Brother Mike and his wife. It's like they are members. Amen. I pray the Lord lead them this way sometime, not trying to put any pressure on them, but they've been a blessing. Brother Mike and him called us out one night, called me and my wife and said, I want y'all to go eat with us. That was been, even before I, that's way before we knew that he may be coming this way. We've had folk that have been coming faithfully that are visitors. And evident you like something or you wouldn't keep coming. Amen. Some of you are faithful. Some of you are here every service. Well, that thrills our hearts. God has really blessed us. It really has encouraged me. It blesses me that our people will come to me and say, Preacher, I can't wait to get back for the next service. Man, that's amazing. When people do that and say that. Some that get here so early sometimes. Amen? For people to want to be at the Lord's house. And for us to have opportunities to meet some of your families and go visit with them. I went to visit with Sister Becky's father and Dana's grandfather. The other day, I, I know Brother I know brother Lee that runs the lawnmower shop behind where we started our church. You don't really remember a lot of his mind's memories going. And he asked me a couple of times, says, now who are you? And I'd remind him, we started a little church down here. Our kids used to get the cardboard out of your uh, trash can here and take that cardboard, those lawnmowers came in and slide down this hill. <laughs> he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember. So I got to go by and talk to Mr. Lee and witness to him. His, his son was there and another young man, I'm not sure who he was, but his son was there and they were eating lunch and I hate going on somebody when they're eating lunch. And man, they were eating bologna sandwiches with hot pepper and I wanted one so bad I couldn't stand it. <laughs> they must not have had enough to go around. But I love that kind of eating. I love bologna sandwiches, amen, and hot pepper. I love that. We ought to have a bologna sandwich and a hot pepper day here at church sometimes. <laughs> but we've met people like that. Our paths are crossed. But we don't get any better than this just when we get to heaven. And I thank the Lord for what he's done for us. Oh, yeah, we've lost some people. We've had some people to leave. And we've had some people to go. And folks, I hope you understand that I have a stand and I have a principle and I have convictions that I must stand on I don't agree with everything that goes on and everything that went on but I know this my hopes in the Lord and I cannot and I will not for anybody go against my convictions and go against what this Bible says I'm not going to do it I've you know because of the stand that I've taken and it's all based on this. Because of the stand I've taken, I have lost people that, that's not friends. They don't really want to have anything to do with me. I hate that. But I, I'm not in control of that. I'm not going to agree with anybody that's doing things that I don't feel like according to this book. It's not because I don't like them. It's not because I, I don't even love them. I mean, the fact that, I mean, I still love them and... and I still can talk and fellowship with them. But listen, I'm not going against what this book says. Amen. I don't care what the, you know, sometimes you have to just stand. I'll just be up front with you. I, I don't marry people that, that are living together. I've talked to people that come to me and want to get married. And I say, are you living together? And they say, yes. I said, well, then you're going to have to separate. If you want me to marry you, you're going to have to separate and live in different households. And they chose not to do that. And you know what? Instead of them doing the right thing, they get mad at me because I won't go against my convictions and what I believe to do what they want me to do, which, they, which what they're doing is wrong. It's not going to happen. 
They got mad at me. We had some people that leave the church. We don't have showers. We don't celebrate women that get pregnant out of wedlock. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not sorry either, but we, we, and people have gotten mad and upset. I'm just sharing my heart, <clears throat> heart with you tonight. But we don't, we don't honor that. That, I, that used to be a time, boy, that was a terrible thing. But now it's all accepted. There's other places they can have showers. They can use the prayer garden if they like. They can have it in, in, in some of your homes or something like that. And I'm not against that. But our church is not going to support that by allowing things happen and take the church and, and, and allow this in the church. I've had people get mad, have people get upset with me, have people leave the church. In fact, I had one wedding that they wanted to have here in the church, and they were living together, and I said, no, you can't do that. We can't, we're not going to allow that. I, won't, I will not do the ceremony. I won't do the ceremony. You and Jennifer aren't li- <laughs> He lived with mom and daddy. I know where he lives. <laughs> and uh, I went to the wedding for that couple that was in a different location. Not in the church, in a different location, not even in a church. And I went to the wedding. And I went to the wedding. The bride that got married, her mother, jumped all over me. You know what I said? I make no apologies for the stand that I took. Now, that, of course, well, I ain't going to say no more. But I'm just letting you know how we stand. Preacher, are you perfect? Absolutely not. But I know what this book says. And if you know what this Bible says, then you go against it. You stand. And I appreciate people that will support us in that. There's some things that we're not going to change. I tell you what, instead of us changing this book, we should allow this book to change us. But you see, people today want to change the book. They want to change the writings. They want to, tra- they want to change the convictions sometimes. And, and I, I, I believe this. I believe people have had convictions before that God has dealt with them about, and they've changed their convictions. Either God wasn't leading them right the first time or he's not leading them right the second time. But I'm excited what the Lord's doing. I look forward to coming to church. I look forward to coming here. You people the last few months about to preach me to death. And um, tonight in the book of Joshua, I was going to preach on the book of Joshua, but in chapter 23, we're not going to get there tonight, of course, but in Joshua chapter 23, there's three ex- exhortations that Joshua was going to give the children of Israel before he died. Now, I was going to preach that tonight, those three exhortations that Joshua gave the children of Israel before he died. We read this morning that chapter, and you remember in the first part of that chapter, the Bible said that Joshua was old and stricken in age. Joshua was getting ready to cross over. But he encouraged the people, but listen, I was going to preach that message. Not because that I think I'm going to die, but I had this thought. That might be my last message. You don't ever know. It might be not only the last message I preach, it might be the last message you get to hear. And that's the reason we need to have our hope in the Lord. Have our trust in him. For us to realize that mercy came down and the amazing grace of God done a work in our life that nothing else could do. Hallelujah and glory to God. And I got news for you. The devil is mad. I hope he stays mad. Amen. I'm not going to make up with him. (laughs) I'm not going to cut no deals with him. (laughs) Amen, Brother Roy? He's going to keep trudging forward for Jesus. 
and continue to make that rascal mad. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So good to be here tonight. Boy, I've been blessed. I've really been encouraged. And uh, thank all those that have sung for us. Brother Jerry. Thank you, brother. God bless you. I thank the Lord for what he's done for us and how he's used us. And sometimes it's so humbling that people that have more education than I do, some of them have doctor degrees, and I told y'all the other week, I wouldn't even make a good nurse, let alone a doctor. <laughs> but I've had doctors in, in the ministry doctors of divinity, to come and want me to talk with them and counsel them and try to help them. I ain't nothing but just, as old brother Jeremy Chisholm says a lot of times, all he is just an old redneck from Traveler's Rest. <laughs> I'm just an old redneck from Roebuck. <laughs> but I thank God for what he's done for me Amen. and for what I have in Jesus. Dana? Amen. You say, that's sort of growth, preacher. Well, get what you can out of it. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anybody got, else got anything they want to say? We're going to close out here. We'll let you close it out if you, in case anybody else has anything they want to say. Miss Martha.
Okay, I'll walk you if you're going to give me a dollar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I appreciate our kids. I really do. I really do. I wouldn't do nothing to hurt either one of them for nothing in this world. Now, if they do wrong, I think they ought to be scolded. I think they ought to be corrected. I think they ought to be told. And uh, a while ago, we had a smell in the church that something was burning. And uh, we looked around, we looked around, looked around, finally went in the nursery, and I opened the nursery, uh, opened the microwave in the nursery, and I felt of it, and it was hot on the inside. I said, um, who had the microwave on? Mm-hmm. I said, well, this is where it's coming from. So I thought maybe it just might have started, might have come on by its own, you know. So I unplugged it, and Brother Steve, we took, we took it out of the nursery and put it back in the fellowship hall. And when I found out, you know, the ones that were guilty, I wasn't mean to them. I didn't kick them out of the nursery. I just went back and I said, look, the best policy for anything is to be honest and be truthful. You know, you could cause fire, you could cause damage, you could cause somebody to get hurt by doing these kind of things. So you have to be careful and don't do things like that. And if you do things like In a Christian kind of way. Amen. All right, y'all, you ready, Brother Jamie? Praise the Lord. Did you have your hand up a while ago, Miss Jane? Oh, you're just pointing to Miss Dot. Okay. Amen. Somebody else while they're trying to. There we go.
bride in Christ will rise. Sing it with me. When Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children, the dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the air. And then those that remain. Midnight cry when Jesus comes again, and then those that remain will be quickly changed, and at that midnight cry. When Jesus comes again At the midnight cry When Jesus comes again My Jesus comes again Well, as I've said before, he didn't stay dead. He's not going to stay gone. He's coming, folks. Just as sure as we're in this building tonight, he's coming. And he's coming again. Thank you, Brother Mike. Mikey, thank you for that song. What a blessing. Amen. I've had a good time tonight. I don't know about you. and You know, I, 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 it's, it's sort of like a baseball game when it goes into extra innings. Amen. Uh, I ain't going to get up and leave. I'm going to stay and see what the outcome is. See what ends at the end and when it does quit. So it's been a blessing tonight. It really has. I'm just sorry that so many folk miss out on it. Well, I wish I could have been a part of it. I know Miss Tammy uh, texted me today. Tammy Gibson, she's having to work today. And she texted me and said, Preacher, I really enjoyed the service this morning. Said, I was able to listen to it over the Internet. And said, uh, uh, I was really blessed and encouraged. And he said, and she said, in fact, uh, another worker came in and sat down with her and and watched it and listened to it. And then she said, save me my gift. I'm a grandparent. <laughs> and brother, Mike, uh, brother Mark uh, took her one uh, to her this morning. But I, I appreciate that. And I appreciate those that are able to have access to see what's going on if they're not able to be here, if they have a desire to. It's been good, folks. It really has. It really has. And every time I... We have a service like this. I always remind me of Psalms 103 where the psalmist David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And he says also, forget not all his benefits. Continues on down through that. I just love reading that chapter when we have a service like this where he healeth all our diseases and forgiveth us of all of our transgressions. <laughs> Whew. Boy, that's good. That's good. Well, read your bulletin for all the announcements. Most of them are in there. Uh, but after the service tonight, we still want to meet with those that want to and are planning on helping us at the fair this year. We need all the help we can get. There will be six days that we'll need to break up at different times. And if you'll meet with us tonight, I'll meet back to, I'm not even going to go back and shake hands. I'm going to shake hands with you now, okay? If you go out, don't stay for the meeting. I'm shaking hands with you and so we can have it and... So you can get home. I know some of you like to get home before dark, and I understand that. And I, I just wish it was daylight saving time all year so it wouldn't affect our people that doesn't like to drive at night. And I understand that. I understand that so much. And uh, so we're so glad you come. We're going to have an invitation. We're not going to close the service like this with have, without having an invitation. Miss Linda, if you'll come. Yes. Um, October the 4th, that's on a Thursday. And we're going to, be get, we're going to do this in the, uh, starting in the morning, right, Miss Ann? For those that can come. And we know some of you work, and we understand that. On October the 4th, 
we're going to have a feeling good time. Amen. We're going to start at 7.30 or whenever you can get here. They're going to peel and cook the apples on Thursday, October the 4th. Then on October the 6th, which is Saturday, at the same time, 7.30, that's when we're going to cook and sample <laughs> the pies. Okay? So there'll be flour everywhere. And there'll be a mess. So if you can't come at 7.30, come any time that you can. We'll be fixing, we'll be fixing close to 1,000 pies. And um, so come and help us if we can. And let me just say, I, I don't take that for granted that our people are willing to work in labor for that. And can I, can I say this? It don't go unnoticed. Those people up there, they recognize the work and the labor and the effort that we put in. In fact, last year we won... Uh, the Fair of the Year Award, the friend of the Fair of the Year Award last year. They gave us a little little type trophy, not a trophy, but a little thing, whatever. It's in the little curio cabinet out there in the, in the front. And um, the Lord's been good. He's blessed that, and I thank you so much. And every one of you that peeled an apple had a part of it. And that is not counting and including those that have given their heart and life to Christ up at the fair since we've been doing this, which is about the last five or six years. Last year we had 75 that gave, made a profession of faith. Amen. Brother uh, Copeland will be with us. Him and his wife Linda will be with us again this year, and maybe another missionary couple that will help us. And those people are soul winners. Those people are soul winners. So you pray for Brother Ralph and his wife as they come along with another missionary couple that the Lord has blessed them. Let's stand if you would, please. And we'll have our meeting immediately after the service, but we're going to have an invitation. And the Lord dealt with your heart about anything, you're welcome to come to this altar. We're not going to hurry the service up. We're just going to let the God move. And hey, if one comes or a hundred comes, we're just going to let God move. If you feel like you need to come, you slip out and make your way down to the altar tonight. And do business with Him. And always put on, a, put, a, put on God before you leave because you're going to need Him tomorrow. You're going to need him. So allow him to work in your life. Fill you with his spirit. Help him anoint you for his use. Amen. Some are coming. Anybody else need to come? Just step out and make your way down to the altar. Oh, man, what a wonderful Savior we serve. What a great God we serve. If you need to come tonight, you come. If you have a need, if you have a burden, maybe you just want to talk it over with God. You don't need to share it with anybody. You just want to talk it over with Him. You come. Others are still coming. Maybe you just want to thank Him for everything He's done for you. Maybe you just want to praise Him for being so good. Remember the text that we read this morning in Joshua chapter 23 where he said that God had fought for us, that he had given us good things and he's given us the good land that he promised to us. Well, the Lord God has given us some good things tonight. We've been in a good place. I thank you for it. Pray for these at the altar. Amen. There's some others coming. Thank God. Praise the Lord. Just don't ever know what the Lord's going to do and how he's going to work in the lives of people. Just surrender it all to Jesus. That's all you have to do. We got it out of here tonight. Wants to join the church. We'll open the church doors. Give you an opportunity to come be a part of the church if you'd like. We've done this quite often a lot lately. The Lord never led you this way. Yeah, I can't hear what you're saying. I can't hear you.
home by itself <laughs> for whatever reason. And uh, those that want to help with the fair, just stay in here if you would, and we'll get the meeting done, and we'll go through it just as quick as we can. We'll try to have you go here at least by 8 o'clock. It won't take long with the meeting, okay? Let's have a word of prayer, and we'll be dismissed. Father, we love you tonight, and we sure do thank you for what you've done. You've been so good to us. Lord, our hearts have been blessed tonight. Our spirits have been moved. Our hearts have been filled. Lord, we felt the anointing power upon those that have took part in the service tonight, the good singing, the good testimonies that were given. The Lord, the opportunity that we had to praise and to, and to honor you. We just th thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, for the addition to our church again tonight. And, Father, you still continue to excite us about what you're doing. And, Lord, I pray that you'll continue to do so. And may your will be done. Bless every heart and every life that's here. Pray that you'll bless those that came to the altar. I pray they got some help. I pray they got exactly what they needed. And, Lord, as we leave tonight, I pray that we'll leave rejoicing, saying it's been good to be in your house today. Take care of us and watch over us this week. Bring us back at the next service on Wednesday night. It will come, and, Father, once again, worship you. And we'll give you praise for all that you've done and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen.